Hi everyone, welcome to Roll the Credits. This is a channel for everyone who likes film, TV and pop culture and my name is Hannah and I am one of those people. Today I thought I would run through five films that I believe that you should be watching this month. Now this video is slightly sponsored, it is a hashtag ad because one of the films was kind of gifted to me by the people at 4Digital Media because it is being released on Blu-ray on Monday so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on but this is honestly my honest opinions about all of the films even the four films that I paid to watch. Let's begin with the film that I watched in the comfortable recliner seats of the Odeon Look. I watched A Private War. This is a stunning film about the horrors that war can impact on a person. It's a true story based on the life work of foreign affairs journalist Marie Colvin and how she suffered through post-traumatic stress disorder from some of the biggest theaters of war in the 21st century, all from Iraq, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, and those war zones that arose after the Arabic Spring. Now, together with her photographer, Paul Conroy, to report on crimes of war and also reporting on the facts and the truth of what is happening. Colvin's main mission with her journalism was to expose and give voice to those most affected by war. She wanted to tell true stories of people who've been affected, and with her writing and with her reporting from the most dangerous war zones, she gave voice to those who couldn't be heard. And I feel that this film, A Private War, is 100% relevant to our time. Now, most of the wars have been and gone, but there's still conflict going on every single day. And the war in Syria is not over yet. People like Marie Colvin just gave a voice to these people and kept reporting even though the people like her bosses and everyone just told her not to go, it's too dangerous. And she was like, no, it's not too dangerous for me if there's still people living in these areas. It is also a film about how important factual journalism is to be able to fight regimes in war times. And I just thought that it was a fantastic piece of film. You should definitely go watch it. It is such an incredible film. It's incredibly well made and you should definitely go watch it. Another film that I saw this week, and it is probably one of the most anticipated superhero films in a really, really, really long time. A, it is Captain Marvel, so it is literally like the one who is thought to be this all-world savior in Avengers Endgame. We will eventually get to find out what actually happens in that film, who lives and who dies and who tells them stories. The other reason why it's one of the most anticipated superhero films is because the superhero is a woman. <gasps> oh my God, women can be superheroes too, who knew? Like this is probably one of the better like origin stories I feel. Like even though there is still a lot to be sought for in the film, like it's not completely fleshed out. There's too many fragmented storylines in my opinion, but it also hits all the right notes in music, comedy. The freaking CGI is incredible. The CGI on Samuel L. Jackson and Clark Gregg is phenomenal. The first second that you see Samuel L. Jackson, you go, oh, there's a lot of CGI in his face. But then once you've had that moment of realization that he actually isn't 30 years younger and yet we haven't just like gone back in time, it's that the CGI is just fantastic. It is so good. It is seamless and it's just incredible to see. There's also a freaking hilarious CGI cat. Doesn't do any talking, thankfully, but you know, it is probably one of the best characters of the film and it's a cat called Goose. Huge role in the film and absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it. So the film is essentially just the origin story of Captain Marvel, how Carol Danvers became first to then become Captain Marvel. It's just an origin story about how she got her powers and her finding who she actually is because she doesn't remember anything from before she got her powers. Incredible fight scenes and there's also this one scene where they're chasing each other in spaceships and for a second I thought I was watching Star Wars. So that's probably the one thing that I didn't like about it. It was like, it was too much in space. Pretty much all of the other Avengers film have pretty much been set on Earth. While this is also set on Earth, there's also like a lot of spaciness because as Verse, she has been living out of space in, on a different planet. She eventually comes to Earth through a blockbuster movie, which is incredible. Like they properly set the scene and established that this is the 90s using the most like intricate details and it's just amazing. And I feel that if you're in the right generation, so if you're like my generation and before, you will find them funny. If you're coming after, so you, if you were born in like the 2000s, then you might not actually like relate to them as much. The thing with like dial up internet, a pager, actually using a phone booth to make a call 
and the funniest moment is when they're transferring files and they're all just like waiting for them to transfer because it takes forever welcome to the 90s i thought that was quite a nice detail but yeah like overall i thought that captain marvel was a fantastic origin story and helped set up the character of captain marvel for her next appearance in avengers endgame which is out in april i believe the third film on this list and the film that i was kindly gifted to by for digital media and it's an old leonardo dicaprio film called the basketball diaries the reason i was gifted this film 24 years after its initial release because it's being released on monday in a special edition blu-ray including a basketball diaries booklet thing it's actually an incredible film i'm so happy that's being re-released because it gave me the opportunity to watch it to be honest i haven't watched a lot of leonardo dicaprio films i've watched like titanic and great gatsby and inception shutter island but that's pretty much it i've never been a huge fan of leonardo dicaprio but this film honestly just proved his talent is impeccable it's about a teenage guy in living in new york who has a promising life he's got a loving mother a great group of friends he's also a promising basketball player with his eyes set on the nba but when one of his best friends dies his whole world flips around and he falls down the dark depths of heroin addiction and it's such a raw performance from leonardo dicaprio there's an incredible scene where leonardo dicaprio's character is stood on one side of the door and his mother is standing on the other side of the door and he is begging her for help and the emotion that comes out in that scene is just absolutely incredible he does it so well and this is only like his third or fourth film i mean he was nominated for an oscar before this movie but it's just like incredible as i said the film is released on monday on a new special edition blu-ray and and you should definitely check out the link below and thank you for digital media for sending me the film to watch the fourth film on this list is this year's Academy Award winner for best picture Green Book now this is a very controversial film and it has received a lot of backlash but I actually enjoyed the film as someone who loves based on true story films it is very important to think of them as a piece of fiction there is much a piece of fiction as Captain Marvel there is much as piece of fiction as Avatar like there's there shouldn't be in any difference between based on a true story and something that wasn't based on a true story a pure fiction film they're fictional portrayals of real people and i believe that they should be seen as fictional characters as well. Based on a true story, Green Book takes us on a road trip through the deep south. Tony Vallelonga, an Italian-American, is thrown into the world of classical and jazz pianist Don Shirley as he drives Don Shirley throughout the deep south on his piano tour. Set in the early 1960s, the story heavily features stereotyping, segregation and racial conflict. While this film has received a lot of backlash from many different communities, I still think feel that this film does a job of portraying how one person can change the mind of attitude of someone else. While the filmmakers probably tried to make this film speak for a larger community, I feel that it is more important to see it as a person to person kind of film. It's more of an exploration of the individual being and how one person's creep preconceptions of other people can be changed by literally just spending time and understanding differences and similarities between us. Even though I really enjoyed Green Book, I was as shocked as everyone else on planet Earth when they announced that Green Book won an Oscar. But I do feel that it won for a reason. And I think that you should determine yourself if you do believe that it deserved to win or not. So that is why I recommend this film for you to watch. Now the fifth and final film is Alita Battle Angel. This is a film that I hadn't actually heard of until I went to the cinema and they kept repeating this freaking ad with James Cameron. I've only seen Titanic of all of his film. I've never even seen Avatar. I know I'm a film vlogger and I've never seen Avatar. But my friend Natasha Atlas, she's also a film vlogger, blogger. She, I'll link her down below. She asked if I wanted to come and see Alita and I said yes. So I went and it was incredible. It was so much better than I expected it to be. Uh, mostly because I had no preconceived opinions on the film. So I just kind of went in with an open mind. I didn't really know what it was about. Essentially, it's about like, it's, I think it's 300 years in the future. And there's cyborgs. And Alita is one of these cyborgs. She's got a human brain, but the rest of her is cyborg. And there's a doctor called Ido finds Alita's brain in a junkyard. He takes her home and adds a cyborg body to her. With a human brain and cyborg body, Alita seeks to become a war hunter warrior, which is a bounty hunter who is after cyborgs who are trying to kill people and other beings on this 
future 300 years society. In a story about finding one's place in society, romance and relationships with parents, Alita Battlingers empowers the character of the young girl, allowing for previously stereotyped weak and vulnerable characteristics to steer her development in the way that she wants. So essentially Alita decides the way to go, even though her newfound father Dr. Ido doesn't want her to be a bounty hunter. She, he doesn't want her to do the racing in the speed racing thing that they have. She makes her mind up as she does the way that she wants to do. I think that this film's best attribute is the visuals. The visuals are absolutely stunning. The CGI, the effects, the set design. So the production design, all the sets are actually real set. They didn't blue screen everything that most films like this do. They actually built like future sets. I thought that was such a nice touch because it just makes it feel a lot real than just having everything blue screen. We watched it in 3D and I don't think that you should watch it in 3D because there wasn't anything that was like special or amazing in the 3D way but I never feel that 3D is something that you have to watch a film in to make it look good. So yeah if you haven't seen Alita Battle Angel yet I definitely recommend you put your shoes on and you go running to the cinema to go watch it now. So there we have it the five films that I recommend you watch it before the end of the month because these films deserve to be seen so make sure you go to the cinema make sure you get the new blu-ray version of basketball diaries and i hope you enjoy this video if you want to read a little bit more detailed review and my thoughts on the films then there's a link below to my blog which i have restarted so make sure you click down below on the link so you can see my full reviews of the five films and that is all for this video i hope you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe if you do like these kinds of videos as i said in the beginning i talk about film tv and pop culture so make sure you subscribe if you like any of those three categories so yeah that's it roll the credits